it's just like a drop-in widget. It's a JavaScript code that, that you can just embed into your website. It doesn't have to be an NFT marketplace. It can be any Stacks apps, app that, that want to take Lightning payments and, and do something on Stacks. That, that can be done. What is up, you beautiful people? You just heard a little snippet from Zach. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but there was a on Stacks NFT a NFT collection where you could buy with Lightning. Literally, you would just point something like your Strike app QR code at this thing, point your camera at the QR code, and pay, and then it would just send the NFT to your wallet. Confirmed, on the Explorer, NFT in your wallet. And this has been kind of going crazy since it happened last night. Jamil, creative Saks NFT, got numero uno. Uh, Your boy got one as well. But... Yeah, I had to get Zach on here to break down some of what he's got going on. And while I was at it, I'm doing a Stacks Grant series on Stacks Grant recipients. How the process works, and uh, just trying to get more people to want to build an ecosystem. There's so much to do, and as you'll hear in this story, uh, Zach is a new coder. He's only been dabbling since 2018. He's not a, a lifelong computer science nerd, and you know he just moved from Web 2 to Web 3. He's just been following his curiosity and building cool, really cool stuff. So when I heard that, I was super, super uh, hyped by it because I'm a new dev myself. So yeah, I got him on, talk about some of some of what he's working on, what's coming down the pipeline, and uh, the Stacks grant process. So let me not talk anymore. Shut up, Jake, and listen to this conversation with Pseudo Zach. Welcome to Built on Bitcoin. Pseudo Zach, you're back. I think. No, you, I was about to say you, you're getting my first repeat. Uh, my, my first repeat guest, but you are the second repeat. But welcome back to the show, my friend. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me back. Good to be here. If people haven't heard the first episode and you want to learn about what he's been working on, uh, building a bridge between Lightning and Stacks, I highly recommend it. But just a quick overview, if this is their first episode and, and hearing about you, can you just give the people a brief background of kind of like your expertise and what you work on. Right. So, um, well, I first got into Bitcoin in around uh, 2013. I sort of heard about it and and bought some and then sold it, of course. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> then I started reading up on it and I got very excited. Um, and then I guess around 2018, when I actually had like a procedure done and I had some off time, then I started, and, and lightning was just sort of happening. It was just coming up. And I just started, you know, I was you know, sitting around anyway. So I started learning and trying to do, like, you know, simple apps with it. Basically, just one simple app, try to get it working. So that that happened. Uh, and people used it, and it was fun, and it worked. And, you know, you could, you could now you could, you know, charge people cents, you know, like, you know, very small amounts over the internet instantly. And you could pay them out if they win. Uh, it's a thing that you're doing. So, yeah, it, it was really cool to see. It was an eye-opener. Um, so, yeah, I started sort of, you know, in my free time, I started building my news. And, and that's what I've been doing since. Um, but the stacks, it was it was similar. You know, I, I heard about the stacks. And, and at the time, they had the um, uh, app.co, right? They had the app uh, marketplace. And, and people were just, you know, building apps on it. And, and again, I did stuff with where um, you could... Like build a form with Lightning, you know, you could you could sort of do um, votes with Lightning and and also log in with Stacks. So, you know, I think yeah, at the time um, that that was a good mix between the two. So I did those, and and since then, um, well, yeah, I guess if we if we uh, come to uh, right about now, um, the last uh, I guess six months or so, even even a little bit before that, I've been, I've been doing a few grants for uh, the Stacks Foundation and. And yeah, it's, it's it's been great. And in in 2018, when you had that downtime and kind of jumped in, is your background before that as a developer, or were you starting fresh? 
Uh, not, not at all. No. I mean, I, I, you know, I think maybe like in college, I did some basic software like back then, I guess it was like some C++ for, um, for like, you know, final project or something. But no, I mean, I, I, it, this was just like a hobby for me. You know, I just stack overflow. I read up on things and I, I looked at the existing, you know, there's so many, so much open source stuff that you can just go in and look at the source code and see, oh, you know, it's doing that. And, and I sort of just, you know, taught myself um, to help things work a little bit. And then I, and, and they broke and then I fixed it and they broke again. So, you know, so <laughs> that's, I'm, I'm going to take this clip and just repeat it to myself every morning <laughs> because that's how I, like I've, I've dabbled in HTML way back in the day. And yeah. in, in June, I started coding, just doing code Academy. Um, mm-hmm. And then I've been kind of like flailing around doing the podcast and 10 other things <laughs> and not developing. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's good to see this progression where you started in 2018 and just kind of got captivated by an idea. And now we're starting to see the fruits of this labor from someone who just started from scratch. So I, I see that yeah. as a super, super positive, encouraging message for people who are maybe switching careers and are scared because it's a whole new thing. But you, you don't you don't even really need to switch careers and look at it as a career and and I and I still don't of course um I just you just I don't know it's I think maybe it's it's a personality thing it it may not be for everyone but if you have like even a small hint of this oh you know like this is cool stuff like, I wonder how it works like some curiosity some something that I don't know it's I I always look at it as like um um, like it works and it gives you a like little bit of a you know hit of dopamine and you feel, oh you feel good it's oh like you click this button and this cool thing happens and you just chase it it's it's like you know chasing a high but you know at the end it it turns out to be something nice and cool and useful that, that's just a plus yeah it's 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 one of those things where like at, at the beginning it's super frustrating like the code doesn't work and the computer oh, yeah. the computer's <laughs> being the computer's being irrational why isn't it working but then when <laughs> when it clicks it feels so but, but damn really good. you're wrong exactly <laughs> more often but actually all the time you know like i'm, I'm wrong it's because the computer is you know it's, it's never wrong right? yeah the computer is pretty <laughs> much perfect it's just executing what you told <laughs> yeah. it to do so give it better exactly. instructions yeah. uh well that okay that that's good to know um so yeah, for this, for this series, I'm kind of, my goal with these small series of videos, the Stacks Grant series is to get more people to do what you do of come to Stacks, get interested in development and apply for a grant and create here. But before we deep dive a little bit into the nuances of the grant application and your experience, mm-hmm. you released an NFT collection. I think it initially came out a couple months ago, right? The Roots collection. Yes. Yeah. The Roots was like uh, two two months ago. I think and then I was just sort of, you know, looking into, oh, what is this thing? How does it work? And just trying to, you know, make my own. So. Yeah. So you released that and it was it was uh, a stacks payment at the time. But then right. this, this call is happening on the 7th of January. And I think last night was when it went live where you could, you're the first <laughs> collection to have lightning payment on Stacks NFT. That's right. Yeah. Um, SDX NFT, um, Jamil, you know, he's super helpful, super cool guy. Um, helped me with, with roots originally, you know, he's, he's very approachable, very helpful. And and for this one also, you know, we were talking about it and he said, you know, when are we gonna do this? When are we gonna do this? And I said, you know, like technically it is ready. I was just sort of maybe holding back and like that occupied with other stuff because you know, like the grant is ongoing, there's a lot of milestones, a lot of stuff I wanted to accomplish. But, you know, we figured just let's let's just do it and see how it's perceived and like see where it breaks, of course, you know. And and we did. Um and it did. Uh but we fixed it. And and yeah, I mean it it turned out um very cool and exciting and, and got a very good um seawolf, I guess, from everyone. So nice. yeah, I think I, I think I mean I know when I saw it, I was super hyped because when I first talked to you and you're kind of breaking down how lightning works and you're giving this great example of like a bar tab and all all this starts to make sense to me, but it's still kind of in my mind. And then Mm -hmm. you could go to lnswap.org and kind of see how that works. And, you know, the UI is basic, but functional and you could, you could, it could do what it needs to do, but it wasn't until I saw this, that it hit me that when properly executed, just how simple, but also how powerful uh the primitive you've built here is it, it blew my mind 
Exactly. I mean, that, that's the idea, right? Like for us, sort of, we're, we're really building sort of just tools and, and a little bit background, um, like APIs and, and these basic building blocks, I would say. And the rest, you know, like the applications that actually offer people value can then use these tools and, and we'll just we'll help them abstract all of this away. So, you know, user, I mean, we'll probably talk about that as well, but like, you know, users should just like scan a QR and not care about what's happening, like, and get to sort of their final goal, whether it's, you know, minting an NFT or paying some service, shopping, and many, many other, I don't know, um, financial things that they want to do. Anyway. So that's the idea. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I, I think that in most things, like the reason, the reason that iPhone works so well is because you don't have to think about how to use it. It just, the, the design is so yeah. good that it's just straightforward and the phone kind of falls away. And that's where crypto has to go to, where like the phone kind of falls away. And ideally we can use, um, you know, functional user patterns like a QR code to pay someone, but people are already being kind of like groomed to do with things like Venmo and Cash App, that mm -hmm. it feels very natural, even though you're now, uh, you're now in fully in Web3. Right. I mean, uh, like there's like, for me, like when I'm testing and my demo videos and stuff like that, I use this um, LB extension, right? So lightning extension. Um, and you can just sort of click those QR codes and, and you don't even need to pull out your phone really because it's, you know, like the LB works with your backend um, LM node. And you just sort of click the buttons and, and accept and confirm the payment and, and that, that's it. Got it. And you mentioned that you and Jamil collabed a little bit on this. How much, how, if other people wanted to implement this, how easy, like how, how formed is it to kind of implement more broadly it, versus this one case? I mean, it, it, it's ready now, I would say. Like this, were, okay, so let's first, you know, like full disclosure, right? So we, I should mention this. I try to mention it whatever I can, like in Twitter and everything. But um, like the, this version that that's currently working and, and people are maintaining, it is is partially trusted, and right? so it's partially custodial because we don't have sort of the contracts deployed and the backend adapted to make it such that um, the the lightning payment will reveal the pre image that will trigger the contract. Well, that doesn't happen right now, but it will. I mean, we'll we'll work on that. I have a pretty good idea how to accomplish it, but this is now trusted. And, and the reason I say that is because um, the, the way that it is now, um, it, it can be used by any, any project. You know, this, is, this was sort of a demo for us. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, of course, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll, we're talking with other marketplaces as well, but um, this, this is, it's just like a drop-in widget. It's a JavaScript code that, that you can just embed into your website. It doesn't have to be an NFT marketplace. It can be any Stacks apps. App that that want to take lightning payments and, and do something on the stacks that, that can be done Switch. and details are um in lnswap.org um, slash developers if so you're working on your grant if there were people that mm -hmm. you know they saw this they get inspired and they wanted to help you uh is there parts of what you're working on that could be outsourced or that you could use help with um yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if they want to contribute, that definitely. I mean, uh, we were just talking today how, like, some people openly, some people a little bit maybe more uh, um, shyly, they were saying that the design of the lens of art, oh, well, I mean, it's true. It, it's, you know, I'm open to fixing it and making it better, but just need contributors, right? So, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. It, it, that's something that I've definitely didn't realize about coding is how creative the actual, like, Art of it is like the, the construction of how you code is 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 entirely up for debate. There's a ten thousand ways to achieve the same thing, so uh, yeah, it, it's good to always always take feedback on where the things could be optimized and etc. Well, moving over to the stacks grant. First of all, what made you decide for this project to apply for a grant? Oh, I mean, a little bit background. I actually did a prediction market first. For the for the um, as a, as a grant that's okay. that, that was my first grant yeah so I did that with I did like oracles that you could deploy yourself that um, it's STX predict I mean you can find it on GitHub it's all open source so that uh, I did that first but this one is um, sort of you know again um, in, in to, to full disclosure the code base itself is already open source it's an, a very cool product very great code base um, called Bolts. Bolts.exchange. So those guys basically did this 
um, some ring swap implementation between um, EVM chains and, and, and Lightning. And they're, they're running and it works great and it's, it's used a lot. It actually just got an HRF grant as well. Um, so I sort of, you know, and I, I was already into, you know, I, I knew Clarity. I was learning Clarity and sort of, you know, getting familiar with it. And I figured, you know, and this sort of stuff is needed, right? Like bridges. And I guess, uh, as you know, like I said, a person that's into lightning, uh, I just want to see it like bridged everywhere. I guess that's one of my like personal things that I try to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that was a good match. I figured, you know, there's this cool thing that can do trustless swaps. And then there's this tax ecosystem that's, you know, that needs onboarding and on-ramps, off-ramps. You know, I can build the same sort of similar contracts and, you know, the, the required missing blocks, you know, missing building blocks uh, with Clarity and, and tie them up and, and, and make it work. And, and that's why, uh, you know, I, I wrote the grant and there was some discussion on it. But I mean, I- even the initial, like, um, response was very positive from so i think it was um yeah rafi and, and, and the foundation were very positive and, and welcoming and said you know this is this is the type of um you know cool idea that that we should be building and help help build um so yeah i mean uh, they were you know uh we went through the i guess we'll talk about that we went through regular procedure and then yeah it started and and uh, I, I guess maybe a couple of months later you know we had the we had the demo and then we brought it to testnet and then main that's uh, that's the story. Beautiful. As a newer dev, I think, you know, when I when I think about myself, like I could see myself being cautious about wanting to apply for a grant because I don't know what I don't know when it comes to coding. Like I haven't built it yet. I think I can do it. But how big should I go on like the milestones or the scope of the project? Do you think well, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. Uh, well, I'm just thinking like how much of, how much do you think of a grant process? I could see like there's like a, you, you set the scope and then you learn to fly on the way down and you just kind of mm-hmm. trust in your ability to learn to fulfill the grant, even though when you're writing it out, you're like 70% sure that you can. Yeah. Is that kind of how it is? That, that, that's, that's what I was going to say. I mean, you, maybe I would say more, you should be more than 70% sure. Like I, I do a lot of pre-work, right? Like I said, like I. I look at, um, first of all, I sort of think about what I'm going to do and, and what sort of, you know, what, what parts are needed, right? Because, you know, this is, this is like a grant is like a with deliverables and, and outputs and, and, and things that you should be able to say here, it is delivered right here, click on this and it will do this. This will be the out. I mean, at least for my grants and, and my approach is this, and that's, that's my sort of approach to, to all of the, you know, like the contract work or project work that I do, like it should. It should have an input and it should have an output and, and it, the output should match this and this and this. And then I think about like what's needed to get there, right? So what's, I mean, well, what do I need to build? And then I also do some, pre- like like I said, like if you want to, in my specific case, if I wanted to implement submarine swaps on, on stacks with Clarity, then Clarity needs to have these um, like SHA-256 function, right? Something to hash these values with. Because at the end of the you know function, I need to check this. So I went in and I checked the documentation and saw that it's all there, right? So I, I didn't sort of assume that you know it would be oh it'll probably work somehow. I mean, I guess you can also do that, but then you open up, up yourself to risks and and uh, and I, I'm sure you know the, there are really um really technical and and you know super smart people on the foundation committee. They will point it out to you as well that this will not work or did you did you think about this and that and. Um, so yeah, that's the sort of pre-work that I do. Um, so yeah, that 70, 80, 90 percent sure you should be you should have that. And then at the end, there's like in the grant application itself, there's a risks uh, section, right? So that's where you sort of write down where can it go wrong. It's you know it's like any project management really. It's just like where can it break apart and what where might you be lacking things so that they can help you or, or they can find someone to help you and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, you should do a like, good, good amount of pre-work to, to think about the process, sort of, you know, try to see into the future, you know, like what's going to happen then and then I'll do that. I'll connect it and I'll make it work. So I think that's needed. No, that's, that's good advice. I know, I know for my application, it was like 
you know, I want to attract Ethereum developers and, and like soul developers to Stacks. And that's the hardest thing is like, how do I, how do I imbue myself into a, a, a non-friendly in a sense or unaware community and not mm-hmm. feel like I'm just an outsider that's shilling something that they don't want. So uh, mm-hmm. T- TBD, but that's, that's, that question was definitely, it's at the end of the application, but it's a super good question. You, okay, so I'm curious, you, you want to expand this lightning bridges to the whole world. Like in a, in a perfect world, you would just clone Zach and you would just bring all the bridges together. <laughs> if you, if you didn't receive this grant, would you have still built a stacks bridge? Or would you have gone elsewhere? I mean, gone elsewhere. I, I, I don't know, to be honest, like I already do like probably too many things. So I should, you know, do do less and and <laughs> probably, you know, like arrange my time a little bit more. Uh, but like I said, it's it's the high, it's the rush, and and, and also to, to you know, to, this is cool stuff to be working on, right? And and this is happening in in our lifetimes and right now. And we, like we have the tools, you have these amazing tools. You can just grab a laptop and start reading, and and in twenty minutes you can have things that are working, you know. So that's why I feel like. Um, you know, like running instead of walking. That that's sort of <laughs> the the first part of it. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I guess um, I would still work on it, but it would probably take a really really long time, and <laughs> and it would be like half done, and and you know maybe not pushed as hard. I mean, it's it's all motivation, right? It's all incentives and motivation, and and that's sort of what tax grants gives you. I mean, it gives you visibility, sure, but it's really sort of the the motivation and the feedback um, that these people like. You know Marvin and 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 Jenny and and everyone on the um, grant committee will sort of tell you that okay, so you should you know chase this and and this is cool to see and it's exciting and and then you you know keep going a little bit more, have something else to show, and so on and so forth. That's that's a I haven't I haven't thought about it like that, but that's a great way of putting it. Where like I, I too, when you say that you have too many things going on, I can relate one thousand percent. Like <laughs> I should probably take off four things off my list yesterday Mm -hmm. but i'm I'm, like there's so many topics i could talk about there's so many cool people i could discuss things with but i probably wouldn't be creating a stacks grant series on stacks grants in like my top four or five things but it was Mm -hmm. number six you know like when when it came to my intention i'm like okay well you know it's still talking to interesting people building in the ecosystem that i'm involved in so it's still Mm -hmm. somewhat on brand and what i'm working on so yeah if you're gonna fund me and like put some money in my pocket and I can kind of like get myself that safety net and do something that's still correlated. Uh, it does bring it up to that like first, second position that it wouldn't be otherwise. And everyone yeah. it's, it's a win-win for everybody. So uh, yeah, that's, that's super well said. Well, last question I have is, and this is more of a broad question, but what do you see for you in your opinion, where's the biggest needs in the ecosystem right now? Ah, uh, well, uh, I, I don't know. I'd probably be repetitive and I, I, I sort of um, agree with Tycho on this one, right? So like DeFi is, I mean, it, it's, it's, it exists and I, I, like my personal thoughts and my personal things aside, I would say um, like that part is just being built, uh, you know. Um, so I, I guess a, a lot more, you know, tooling and, and scenarios and, and I don't know, just any building blocks that can be built there. Like there's, I mean, I, I guess this is a good um, connection to mention here. There is a foundation grant wish list. There's, there's an entry there that requires support for tap roots for catamaran swaps, right? So, you know, this is this is a wish list and it's this, this issue is there. So if like there are any technical people like developers that want to go in, jump into clarity and like maybe have that capability it, it's already there you know these things are needed and they're they're even voiced and, and put down and on paper even the specifications what's required it, it's it's all there so you know uh there's no i don't think we could say this needs more attention than than others it's just whatever you want to build it's probably <laughs> okay go just follow your curiosity and that's where the best stuff is going to be lead well, yeah, exactly. I mean, otherwise, you know, if otherwise it sort of becomes a chore, isn't it? I mean, if you, you don't, you don't, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you want to, you know, it's it's a bit cliche, but it's cliche for a reason, right? So follow your passion and and do things that that excite you, that inspire you, and and just do those things, and then and then you'll do them and you'll do them well, and 
you won't stop until you you make them work or I mean, so, or, you know, they'll, they'll fail, but you'll still be saying, oh, that was a cool time that I tried to do, make this work. So I think that's like a general, a little bit, maybe more philosophical argument. I was just going to say, like, <laughs> I, I ask what's missing in stacks. You give just general life advice. Now, <laughs> now some developers can become a yoga instructor. We just lost somebody. <laughs> uh, well, okay. No, it's, it's, it's great advice, though. I, I completely agree. You should, you should 100% go where your curiosity is because you're just going to go harder in that area versus otherwise you're going to hit a limit. Right. Uh, if you, if you want more. me to be more like specific, I guess like right now we need like a couple of things like more technically specific, I can say um, like this, all these NFT um, stuff standardization, right? So we need like this non-custodial marketplace standards, like we need inputs and we need, I don't know, I guess at some point, I, I know like Pager and all these, you know, great guys are doing a lot of work and putting this out and getting feedback and, and there are like great discussions happening around this, but I guess you know it needs to be maybe finalized and 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 put into place, and people should I guess adapt it and use it and etc. Um, so so that's one thing I would say. And like I said, for specifically, I mentioned that um, like taproot support for catamaran swaps, it's, it's, it would be very cool to have. Yeah. Um, and and I guess wallets, you know, like wallets should be there should be more choices if you ask me for wallets and. We shouldn't be sort of depending on one type of wallet. So you know, like libraries should be more generic, and uh, and and there should be more both. You know, desktop, browser, mobile wallets. They should exist. If those are just my personal views. I I agree, especially mobile wallets. Like there's so many times yeah. when there's an NFT collection that's dropping, and I'm at work and I don't have my laptop with me, and I just wish <laughs> I could just open up my phone. Maybe it's Xverse or whatever. And then I can just do it that way, but uh, you know, not not yet. I know someone someone out there has to be working on that. It's just in oh, the yeah. shadows. I, I, yeah, I'm sure it's being worked on. It's just maybe we don't we don't see it yet, or we don't hear about it yet. So. Yeah. Uh, well, Zach, thank you. I don't have any other questions or anything else you want to close on. No, nothing really. Like I said, I could I could talk about like some plans uh, for the future for the uh, for this grant and LN swap in, in particular. Um, oh yeah, so, that's, know, a, that's, that's a that's a great place <laughs> to end off on. Yeah, let, let's let's lead off on like the next six months to the year of uh, yeah. what, we, what we might see with LN swap. So I mean, there's of course no concrete um, roadmap or anything yet, but like there are a few um, focus scenarios that I I would like to um, work on. So one path is also this is mentioned on the on the grant issue as well. Um, someone commented and said um, <clears throat> like like turn this into a wallet, right? So, I mean, or at least have, have some wallets integrated so that people can, like you said, like they have a mobile wallet that can scan a QR code and identify that it's a Stacks address and, and do, and, you know, send Stacks or send tokens there. Um, or if it's a Lightning invoice, do a trustless swap in the background and, and still do the action without sort of bothering the user with, with external websites and, and other apps and, and all that. Right. So I think this is one of the cool um, things that can be built and probably, I mean, it would be cool to, to, to have, have, have it happen. That's, that's one thing. Um, and then the other path is sort of the more of a decentralization and the increasing of the liquidity on, on LN swap itself and also other instances just like LN swap, right? Because the whole point of sort of my... my um, Milestone three on this grant is that I um, I will release this as as a doc, I, I'll release the LNXTX bridge code base as Dockerized version, right? So what that means is that anyone can spin this up and and run them uh, and and run this sort of swap and operate this swap and you know just fund the address and then they'll be counterparty to all these trustless trades between Lightning and and on chain Bitcoin and. And they'll earn their fees, whatever they set it to. Right now, I think I have like two percent. They can set to five percent, or they can set to one percent or or point five percent. So there can be like an open market um, where people compete uh, on on these trustless swaps. And you know, since there's no foul play, right? So anyone can run these, and anyone can earn fees. And this is like a yield on your um, stacks or USDA or ETC or or Lightning. Right, so this is sort of the one of the cool points of this um, 
uh, grants and, and this app, LMSDS Bridge. Um, and, and then I guess maybe the final, maybe the, the, the final um, boss of this thing is to um, find a way. Um, maybe, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm still sort of juggling some ideas, writing down some ideas, but to find a way to um, convert this current setup into more of a um, liquidity pool setup on Stack Chain, right? So that general idea would be people would actually contribute um, to a, a liquidity pool of SDX on chain, right? And they will have the opportunity to be counterparty to all the trades on LN Swap itself. Uh, fully, of course, should be trustless and, and fully backed by reserve. And then actually earn fees and then earn yield on their BTC and SDX. So that's sort of the final goal. But I would say that's that's still a little bit far away. It's still in idea stage. Got it. And so, so you're saying this would be a way that people could easily... Uh, buy into the, the the stacks ecosystem by buying stacks using Lightning with this kind of like exchange pool. Exactly. I mean, they can they can like um, in let's say you know in the current iteration they will run a Lightning node, right? Which which will have like on chain funds. It might or it might not have on chain funds and Lightning funds, and then they will also contribute to to the um, to the liquidity pool of Valance swaps by sort of depositing SDX into a, a contract. Right, and once this is all in place, LN Swap will only act as a coordinator to um, sort of facilitate the swaps between any user. So any user would come into the um, front end and say, you know, I want to swap SDX for UTC or Lightning for SDX something, and then in the background, the LN Swap will just sort of coordinate these swaps that other people's nodes actually um, complete and and fulfill these trades, right? And the fees would, of course, accrue, accrue to them. So that's the very, very general, you know, birds, you know, view of, of the of the plan. That's that's super cool. When, whenever I talk to you, I get so hyped about the future. It's insane. Uh, this is how I live. Imagine. How, how I live. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just chilling on the beach in Hawaii with your laptop. You're just living the good life. Ah, I wish. I wish. That's the goal. Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool yeah, though exactly well i mean yeah i think when everyone saw this last thing everyone got excited just because you can see how simple the process was so just personally i'm gonna say thank you for building what you're building oh, appreciate uh, it. thank you for using and providing feedback and spreading the word yeah thank you do, doing what i can and to anyone else who's listening uh you know this the goal of this video is one to make you aware of all the cool shit zach is building but two to hopefully make you start thinking about applying for a grant and start building cool stuff like Ellen Swap yourself in the Stacks ecosystem. So if you're at all compelled, check it out. GitHub is currently the place, but rumor has it they're changing the format pretty soon to have their own portal. Yeah, be on the lookout for that. But yeah, that's all I have for this episode. So Zach, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a good one. I hope you guys enjoyed this conversation as much as I enjoyed uh, being able to talk to this cool ass dude. If you are at all interested in building something in Stacks, you know there's so many resources now. There's Clarity University if you want to learn Clarity. If you're not in this current cohort, it's starting up on the 10th. I suggest you get on the wait list. Start learning. It's never too late. And you know it really is still like the first or second inning right now. So we're just getting started. But yeah, highly recommend. Go to stacks.org slash grants and apply for something. I did this as a content creator. There's so many things they could use. There's, you know, trying to get the word around different parts of the globe that are underserved. There's a bunch of dev stuff that's needed. Uh, technical documentation writing. Like, there's, there's just a ton. So there's a good chance that what you're good at might be useful or maybe it's got to tweak a little bit and, uh, you know, there's something out there that you can, with a little bit of elbow grease, can provide, just like Zach's been doing, by just learning and learning and learning and dabbling and following his curiosity and trying to bring lightning to the world. So, yeah, that's all I got to say for this. Uh, I love y'all. I'll see y'all in the next episode. My name is Jake. You'll see me around as Jake Blockchain. And, yeah, this has been the Built on Bitcoin podcast. Peace.